this playlist deals with some aspects of Europe Code 2 version 2023. Watch this channel or playlist for further selected topics. This video deals with clause 8, the ultimate limit state, and is the fourth video regarding Kier. The optimizing the inclination of the compression field means that you want a simultaneous yielding of shear reinforcement and failure of the compression field. By doing so, you will have the least amount of shear reinforcement. Taking Looking at the uh, uh, shear stress resistance, design value of the shear stress resistance, then you have different, uh, you can choose different angles theta, the angles of the compression field. And by changing this, you can achieve an optimum. And this optimum angle is given by uh, this formula, which is stated here below. Of course, this, uh, the cotangus theta of this optimum angle must be between one and the cotangus theta min, the minimum value of cotangus theta. Additional actual force NVD uh, due to shear VED can be calculated as follows. Looking at the uh, pre diagram of 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 shear fourth actions you will see that the tension cord of the tension the tension cord is ftd the compression in the compression cord is fcd and uh, the compression in the compression strut if you when you take the horizontal component of it it's nvd and the vertical component is vd all those forces must be in equilibrium with the external forces applied on the section. And uh, we will calculate this equilibrium around mid section, which is the dotted line here. So you, now you can take the, the translation equilibrium and the moment equilibrium, and then it is easily to find the formula 8.51, and you will arrive at this. NVD, of course, uh, NVD divided by VED is the cotangus theta, uh, which is uh, simple here. So this 8.50, you can find it directly. Uh, the absolute value of VED is taken because NVD is always tension. So we must be sure that this is a positive value. There is a maximum to the uh, uh, tension in the tension cord, and that maximum uh, of FTD must be smaller than the maximum bending moment divided by Z, which is an approximation, plus NED over 2. And the compression force, or, or the force in the compression cord, is then, of course, uh, uh, the same as that of FTD, but instead of plus, it's minus. We can compare this with the formulas given in Europe Code version 2004. And in formula 6.18, we find something different on first sight, but in reality, it is the same. Because in Europe Code version 2004, we talk about delta FTT, which is the additional tension in the tension cord, and it is the total tension minus the tension in a tension cord only due to the bending moment. So if you do FTD minus MED over Z, it's equal to NVD plus NED over 2. But in the case, like for instance, formula 6.18 is done with NED equals 0, the ex external normal force on the section is 0, then you have that delta FTD equals NVD over 2, and NVD was this value, so we arrive, in fact, at the same formula, except that uh, this formula was for inclined reinforcement. So is cotangles alpha or with alpha equals to 90 degrees. To compare it with this section here, 
then you will see that cotine of alpha is zero. The same applies for the maximum value. For the maximum value, when NED is zero, then you will see that FTD or yeah, FTD equals uh, uh, the delta FTD plus MED over Z. So it's also the same formula. Then something about the uh, width of the section, BW. The definition is that it is the smallest width of the cross section between the tension cord and the neutral axis. Then there the, the, the code gives you two drawings, two cases, and BW is indicated on the drawing. It's also stated that the um, shear reinforcement ratio must be multiplied by the coarseness of delta, which is the angle uh, uh, like, like indicated on this drawing. The cos of, co of delta is very small. In most cases, uh, coarseness delta equals almost one. But it allows you to, to, to take uh, uh, this into account, for instance, for 45 degrees or, or 30 degrees, it can, it can have some impact. Now, let's look at it a little bit closer. We take the section like it is on this drawing given in the code, and then we will indicate the uh, tension cord, which is the dotted line. This is the point of gravity of the tension cord where the tension reinforcement is. For instance, in this case, we have two bars, so we will take there the uh, uh, point of gravity, the dotted line, and then the uh, neutral axis. Let's suppose this is the full red line that the neutral axis is here. It can be a little bit up, a little bit down, doesn't matter. This is the neutral axis. Now, if we apply this definition of BW literally, literally, it says that it's the smallest width of the cross section between those two lines. Well, the smallest width between those two lines is the width uh, at the uh, tension cord, which is the width at the point of gravity of the tension reinforcement. And it is not the width indicated on the drawing. So I'm not saying this will be a big difference, but it's not uh, consistent. The definition is not consistent with the drawing. For a circle cross section, there are also some directives for that. In a circle cross, cross section, we define a certain with BW, the compression zone is indicated by XSB, and the maximum width of this compression zone is BX, or it's the width at the level X. And DH is the hoop diameter of the theorems. Looking at this, you, you will see that there is a compression cord with a point of gravity uh, indicated here by C. There is a tension cord, which is the, all those reinforcement in tension within the width BW. This is the tension cord. It gives you the force P. And the distance between those two is Z, the lever arm or uh, shear force. BW must be chosen by iteration in such a way that it fulfills the moment and uh, translation equilibrium of the section. So it must, uh, it, it's, uh, it must fulfill those uh, equilibrium conditions. Then you have BW. The uh, shear reinforcement ratio was given by ASW divided by BW and the spacing S. When you have a circular section, you must multiply this ratio, shear reinforcement ratio, by BW over DH, the hoop uh, diameter. Filling in the 
uh, ratio of re the reinforcement ratio, the shear reinforcement ratio for a rectangular section, row W, then you will see that the uh, shear reinforcement ratio for circular sections equals ASW divided by DH and divided by the spacing. Of course, BW must always be smaller than the hoop diameter. A web can contain ducts, ducts for, for instance, um, in the longitudinal direction, and these ducts for um, uh, 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 tension, uh, uh, tension uh, pre-tension reinforcement, sorry, or for other uh, elements. And when the sum of the ducts are bigger than the BW over eight, then you should normalize the width of the section and you should calculate with B normalized, which is equal to the BW minus the proportional factor K duct times the sum of all the diameters of the ducts on a certain level. And this factor K duct equals uh, goes from one point goes from 0.5 to, to 0.8 and 1.2 depending on where you need the ducts for if it's steel ducts plastic ducts or injected ducts and things like that anyway you have some indications how to deal with uh, uh, reinforcement uh, ducts concerning Concentrated loads at the distance AV. We see that the distance AV is equal to Z cotang as beta inclined, and beta inclined is defined as it is mentioned on this drawing. It is a function of the distance A1 that a concentrated load is acting near the support. Of course, AV must be smaller than Z cotangus theta, otherwise you will not uh, be able to use those favorite formulas for concentrated loads at distance, at a small distance to the support. The design value of the resisting uh, shear stress is then given by formula 8.55, including uh, the uh, additional capacity because you have a direct transfer of load from the uh, point load to the support. There is also an upper limit to that, which is in fact the uh, uh, capacity of the compression field, the maximum capacity of the compression field. But this is a little bit, not complicated, but uh, a little bit annoying to calculate this. So sometimes it is much easier if you use as upper limit, which is the same as what is written here, that cotangus theta must always be smaller than the value given here in this uh, form formulation. It makes it much easier than using this. You can now, of course, also optimize the angle of the compression field theta. For nu equals 0.5, you can have an optimization if you take cotangus theta equal to the expression as it is in here, which is of course a function of the beta inclination. So for each position of the concentrated load within the vicinity of a support, you will have another optimum angle of the compression field. In 8.2.3 clause 13, then they, they, uh, they will deal with inclined shear reinforcement. Of course, the inclination of the shear reinforcement is defined by um, the angle alpha w, and it must be between 45 and 90 degrees because of the definition as it is stated here. The <clears throat> Uh, formulas are adapted to take into account the inclination of the uh, 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 shear reinforcement. And 
On the right hand side, you will see the formulas when the uh, inclination, when, when uh, alpha w equals 90 degrees, so when you have vertical shear reinforcement. Then you will see the influence of alpha w on the different formulas. And we have also concentrated floats at a distance AV for inclined gear-ups. And then the design value of the resistance of the uh, gear force press is then modified, uh, as you can see, by formula 8.62.